So you can see there that because I've got no loft on the 46, comes out very, very low. I've landed that just on the green and you've seen it's released out to about 20, 25 foot. So what that tells me is I can't land my 46 on the green. So we need to think outside the box here. We need to view this shot and think, what trajectory is this coming out? Where do I need to land the ball in order for it to kind of slow down and stop? So welcome to the channel, guys. My name's Ryan Moke, and today I wanna to talk you through a couple of different shots that you can play around the green. Now, the best players in the world when it comes to short game have multiple different options that they can choose from. Not only can they hit the shots, but they can also see the shots. So if you're someone who's very one dimensional, you grab your 56 or your 60 degree wedge and you're always going high, perhaps you can make this easier on yourself. If only you could look a little bit further than your 60 degree and have a few different options. Let's get stuck in. Now most golfers, when they go to practice their chipping, they'll have 50 golf balls in front of them with one golf club, trying to hit the same trajectory and land it at the same spot on the green. And what I wanna challenge you to do today is to actually grab a few different golf clubs when you're around the green so that you can learn to see some different options. At a bare minimum, we need a high shot, a medium trajectory shot, and a low shot. Now you can obviously do that with one golf club by manipulating the ball position, manipulating the shaft position, the face, all that kind of stuff. Or you could simply use a different club. So I'm going to show you a couple of different shots here today. And as you can see, the flag's kind of in the middle of the green, but I've missed it left on this hole here. I'm in this uh, little gully here with a slope running up. So I can definitely use a few different options. So let's go over a couple of different shots. So straight away, I've grabbed my 60 degree wedge and I'm going to hit what I would consider my high shot. So this would be one where I have maybe the ball position off the middle of my stance, slightly open club face, and I'm trying to loft this golf ball up onto the green, maybe land it maybe halfway between the flag and the fringe. So this is my first option, the first one that comes to my mind. So I'm gonna open the face a little bit, set up with the ball, basically in the middle of my stance and just go ahead and hit that kind of higher shot. And you can see there that that was quite high, landed on the green, released a little bit. Now, while that might be the shot of choice, we also need to consider some other options. I'm going to use the same golf club, but I'm going to hit a more of a medium trajectory shot. And what does this do to the landing point? Well, if the high shot needs to land closer to the hole because it's not going to roll out as much, think about it as if I was to hit a flop shot here, that thing would go sky high and land and maybe roll maybe one or two feet. If I go with a high shot, not necessarily a flop shot, but a high shot, you saw where that landed kind of halfway between the flag and the fringe and released out about 10 feet. So now if I go for a medium shot, I'm looking to change my landing point and maybe just fly it just past the fringe and let it release maybe 10 to 15 foot. So let's go ahead and hit this medium trajectory shot. I'm just going to play this with a square face on my 60 degree wedge, ball in the middle, and I'm hoping that this comes out no higher than flag high, landing it just on and letting it release. You can see there that that was a nice medium trajectory shot and it released pretty much all the way to the hole. So that one's actually closer than the high shot. So maybe that's a good option for me. Now the last one I'm going to play with my 60 degree wedge is the low shot. So I'm going to basically place this ball position a fraction further back, little bit more shaft lane, ever so slightly, not too much. And really because of the slope, I've got no option but to land it the same as the medium. Now. The thing about this shot is I'm going to play this shot, but I don't think this is the correct club. Given the fact that I need to go up a slope, landing it, landing it on a green that's more above me, I think a low shot's going to be uh, far too fast. It's going to um, land and roll out a, a, a bit too much. So let's give it a go anyway, just for the sake of trying it, and we'll see what happens with it. So I hit that a little bit too firm, but as you can see, quite a lot of rollout out of that one. So we could argue that the high shot or the medium shot is the correct play here, depending on where you need to land that ball. Now, 
That was a pretty simple example of a high, medium and low shot with my 60 degree wedge. Now, a lot of you can probably play those, but I want you to kind of think outside the box here. What other clubs can we hit? If I was to place my 60 next to my bag, what if I grabbed my pitching wedge? So I'm gonna grab my 46 degree wedge here. Now, if 60 comes out low and can't stop when it lands on the green, what must my 46 do? Where would that need to land? Well, if I landed this on the green with a 46, it would, it would literally never stop. Like, well, it would stop, but I, I can't do that. So let me, let me just try and hit a normal shot with a, with a 46. Let me just see what this does. So you can see there that because I've got no loft on the 46, comes out very, very low. I've landed that just on the green and you've seen it's released out to about 20, 25 foot. So what that tells me is I can't land my 46 on the green. So we need to think outside the box here. We need to view this shot and think, what trajectory is this coming out? Where do I need to land the ball in order for it to kind of slow down and stop? So obviously we can't land it on, so we have to land it off the green. Where do we have to land it? Maybe, maybe I'm thinking, can I land a nice low shot into about here? And I'm gonna use that first bounce or that first hit on the, on the fringe to slow the ball down, have it pop up a little bit. Um, so this is for someone who maybe do, doesn't have the confidence in going high. So let's play that 46, normal setup, normal ball position, square face, but I wanna land it maybe two meters just off the green there. So you see there that that's landed just on the fringe, slowed it up, and it's uh, maybe just as close, if not closer than the medium shot with my, with my 60 that I played. So again, this video isn't about how close can I hit these shots. It's about, um, for me, it's about, can, do I have the IQ? Do I have the golf IQ to look around this area and think, what are my options? How many options do I have? Let's put the 46 away and go to a, let's go to an eight iron. Okay, so this is something that, you know, I, I, I personally wouldn't play but it's definitely an option that I could play. And again, obviously I coach the game for a living, so I see these shots and, and players that I deal with um, on a daily basis sometimes can't see these shots. They literally don't see that this shot is an option because they're so used to practicing with their 60 degree or their 56 uh, at, the, at the short game area. So again, eight iron, this is going to go much lower than the 46. It's going to roll more. It's not gonna come out with as much backspin. So all of a sudden, I'm going to play this shot as if it's uh, more of a top spinning shot, almost. Okay, so now as I, and again, guys, you, you have to practice these shots to understand what these, what the golf ball is going to do and how it's gonna react off the face. But I'm picking with the, with the flight that this is gonna come out on, I'm picking that this needs to land, well, it will land somewhere around here. So I'm thinking, two to three bounces off the green and then let it release. So let's have a go with this. So I obviously don't need to hit it as hard either because I'm only landing it maybe three, four paces in front of me. So let's give this a go. Little thin, but it actually still works out because I'm using the roll of the ball to get this close to the hole, not the flight. So, you know, we could go on and on. We could, um, we could use a five iron. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I've actually done in the past, and depending on the lie, what about a fairway wood? So again, if you've never practiced this shot, you might be thinking, well, wh what, the he what the hell is he doing, right? So again, a fairway wood, all I know it's gonna do is it's just gonna roll. So if you're, you know, if you're really nervous around the greens and you just need to get it done, Obviously, ideally, go and see someone and help your short game out. But basically, if, you've, if you can see this shot and you've practiced this shot, you can play it. And that just comes out like a little putt. And it can, it can get the same result as all the other clubs. What it's about is it's about understanding and seeing these golf shots around the green. It's not always a 60. It's not always a 56. It's not always an 8-iron. There's many ways to play it. Nothing's right or wrong. So as you can see there, you need to train your golf IQ. You need to go to the chipping green, grab 
your bag, take your bag with you to the chipping green. Don't just walk in with a 56 or a 60 and think, you know, I'm gonna hit a couple of chips here and there. Take your whole bag, use a lot of different clubs around the green, not to get them close, but to learn. Just chuck 10 balls in front of you in this, in this situation here and say, right, I'm gonna hit two with my 60, two with my 56, two with my pitching wedge, two with my eight iron and two with my five iron and see uh, not only how close can I get them, that's not really the main goal, but see where they need to land, what trajectory they come out with, what's the roll like, and how hard you have to hit them. That to me is training uh, your short game and you, you will have a much better awareness when you get around the greens, you're, you're going to have a much better um, awareness of what, what shot to play and, and, and when. So guys, really simple video today. Really hope you enjoyed that and learned something from it. If you like this video, please press the like and subscribe button. If you've got any comments, please pop them down below. Until next time, thanks for watching.